For this lesson, we've been going over block diagram algebra. Now officially, what is block diagram algebra? It's the functions represented by interconnected blocks, which can be simplified into a single block operation. What this means is you're using algebra and diagram reduction rules to simplify complex functions into a single block, similar to the illustration you see below. In this lesson, we're going to be referring to the rules of block diagram reduction. I provided six rules that we could be using for these exercises. Now, the first three you'll see very common in any of your exercises. Those will be the ones I'd recommend to become very proficient and familiar with. Now, in your PE review books or any of your control systems books, you'll actually see multiple rules, more than six. Some of them will have 12 to 8, depending on which books you have. But for this lesson, I only provided six. And we'll go ahead and move on to some examples to get our feet wet and to get familiarized of how to use these rules. So for this one, we're going to start off with a relatively easy problem just to get our feet wet. All right, for this one, we have one summoning point and three blocks. So we're going to start off with the easiest rule of them all. Rule number one, when they're in series with the same flow path, it actually comes out to multiply them together. For example, G1 and G2 are in series or in the same flow path. So it's G1 times G2. We have the same thing here, G2 times G3. The whole idea is you want to approach this one set of blocks at a time. So for this one, I went ahead and cheated and already had a block ready to rock and roll. So they're going to share a single block of G2 times G3. All right, for our last one, let's see if we can uh, refer to our rules to the right. We have two blocks going to the same summoning point in the same flow, flow direction, excuse me. So this actually mimics rule number two over to here to our right. And our sign is a plus sign. So it's going to be G1 plus G2 times G3. So this come out to a final answer. I'm going to see if I can make this look somewhat decent. And one block. There we go. All right, this is going to come out to look like G1 plus, again, note the sign, G2 times G3. And that right there is our final answer. All right, for this next problem, we're going to actually make it slightly more difficult. This one's going to have five blocks and one summoning point. All right, the first thing we're going to do is actually look at the easiest ones we could tackle first. Now, in my mind, I would like to get rid of G4 and G3. Because if you have, uh, if you get rid of those or eliminate those, the rest of it's just in one flow path. Now, looking at G4 and G3, they actually mimic one of our rules. If you look at the flow, they're all going to the same direction, to the same summoning point. This actually mimics rule number two. So, in this case, we'd actually put G4 and G3 in a single block and actually subtract G3, excuse me, G4 from G3 and it would look something similar to what we have here. I cheated, already had one ready to go. So all we did was actually put G3 and G4 in a single block. Now since G4 is a negative feedback or a negative sign right here, it would actually be negative G4, as you see here. Now I'm gonna leave G3 positive because again, that's a positive flow right there. If it was a negative here, then I would actually leave the negative sign there. All right, the next best thing to actually eliminate would probably be G3 minus G4 and G2. So if I was going to eliminate those, let's move this up. So I would like to eliminate those. The best way to accomplish that is referring to our rules. Now this one has a feed going the other direction. It's going back. It's a positive feedback. So it's going to be rule number three. So this would actually create a block auto itself. Again, I'm just going to create a block just to keep it simple. I'm not going to add G1 or G5 yet. So it's going to be G2 over, and this is 1 minus, and the reason it's a minus, be aware of the signs. If it's a positive here, it's going to be a negative, and if it's a negative, it's going to be a positive. Notice how those are flipped. That's the only one that's flipped you got to be aware of. So it's going to be 1 minus, and it's going to be G2, 
again, excuse the handwriting, times g3 minus g4. So let's simplify this one down. I'm going to bring that up here. Let's bring it up just a little bit. And all right, so if we simplify this one down, it's going to be g2 over 1 minus, now again, this is a negative g2, so it's going to be negative g2 times g3, and then a negative g2 times a negative g4 would actually give us positive g2 and then g4. Be aware of the signs because that will that will trip you up on the test. So, and then we have g1 going in and then going to another block, g5. Looking at rule number one, during a single flow path like this, it'd be at, you just multiply them together. So it'd be g1 and then g5. Pretty simple way of simplifying it down and we'll get a final answer of this guy right here. All right, let's try one more problem. All right, for our last example here, we have four blocks and two summoning points. Now I'm going to start by tackling the easiest blocks I can think to simplify. By looking at this, I believe I can actually simplify three and two because that would actually get rid of a summoning point as well as eliminate two blocks. By looking actually to our rules to the right, this would mimic rule number two over here. So it would actually become g2 plus g3. And I'm going to cheat. I already have a block diagram already ready to go. So same block diagram. All I did was simplify down to one block to the right here, which is g2 plus g3. And simplifying this one down one more time. I'm going to cheat. That's pretty much how it's going to look. And this is going to be multiply. It's going to be a multiply time of those. Now, if you actually wanted to make this in a correct algebraic formula, it's going to look something like g1 times g2 plus g1 times g3. And g4 is right there. And this is going to a positive feedback. Okay, so now we need to simplify this down one more time. Now this again will mimic rule number three. So this will actually create a final function of, let's move this back up. So it's actually going to create g1 times g2 plus g1 times g3 over. Now look at the sign. It's a plus sign. So again, we're going to reverse it. It's going to be 1 minus g4 times, it's going to be g1, g2, plus g1, g3. Now this will not be the final answer you usually see. You usually have to simplify this down one more time. So we're going to have g1, g2, plus g1, g3, over 1 minus, multiply g4 times g1 and 2, so it's going to be negative g1 times g2 times g4. Now, negative, again, times a positive, it's going to be negative g1, g3, and g4. I apologize that my g's look like sixes. And this will be your final answer. All right, and that concludes the examples for today.